there we go I don't have anything yes I do <laughs> mm. good morning everybody so that took ages to come up on Facebook this morning on my phone. You know, you go through that, hmm, is there anybody here? How are you? Welcome to a quite a bright sunny morning in West Gippsland. Um, oh, now everyone's here. Uh, it's a looking like a lovely day, but a cool day, which is a good gardening day. So we'll see how we go. Good morning, Robin, Del Denise, hello. Maria, good morning. Um, Yvonne and Francis are here with Liz. Bridget, good morning. Daisy, hello. So, Louise is here. Oh, Louise, I got your photos. They look fantastic. Can I pop them on AQL so everyone else can see them? They look amazing. Um, Louise has made up two of her beautiful Easter baskets, but using one of Jason Yontor's other beautiful ferny, flowery, Prints looks really, really, they look really, really nice. Um, Lorraine, hello, good morning to you. Hello, Diana, welcome from Costa Rica. Karen, good morning. Oh, look at you all, darlings, you're all here. So, darlings, I don't know where I got that from. My head is still chopped off by the camera, Rob. Jenny, it's fine though, don't, no, no, that's not an invitation we to don't fix have it. Camera. Huh? No, 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 no. I'll just stand back. Ginny knocked the camera. Donna, good morning to you. I got your um, I got your email. I'll reply to you later on. Deb, hello, Karen. Chris Otto, who did I miss? Did I miss anyone? Cheryl, Kathy, Ahern, Joy, Liz. Um, Nancy, good morning. <laughs> Diana, your grasp of the English language just always freaks me out. I feel like you shouldn't. I know, but you're amazing. Jenny Pesh, hello. Are you still in Tassie or are you back? Jane Pixley, good morning. Carol Jackie, um, Doreen, I'm just reading the class list, aren't I? It's like, it's like roll call this morning. Karen says, hello from a wet UK. Sunday with hexes for the borders on my applique sampler. Oh, lovely. That sounds, that sounds a nice way to spend a rainy Saturday. Nature, good morning. Julie, good morning. Okay. You can all talk. Can you talk to each other, please, so I can get it started? Oh, Gidget's here. Hello. Um, Fiona's in the building with Helen Leslie. <laughs> Sylvia says, I can't believe I'm up and organized. This is, this is our ploy, Sylvia, to get you up and out of bed to get things done on a Sunday morning. But it's evening for Anne Hamilton in a wet, cold UK as well. We're all here from all over the place. Oh, including Suzanne, who's camping in the snowies. Seriously? Wow. Is it chilly? It must be, but I know you've got internet or you've at least got phone reception. Oh, Mandy, good morning. Julie, I'm loving those colours behind you, but then I'm a blue girl. Ah, there you go. Nice sharp blades, my rotary cut. Oh, well, I'm glad you're all, you're all good. Angela's here as well from Bright. Hope it's nice and cool up your way, mate, this morning. Sylvia Trench is in the building from Yumeka. Pilar, okay, I love you all. Let's go. So, this is kind of part, kind of part two. Robert, can you do, Rob's here. Can you do me a favour and pass me that autumn flyer that's sitting over there that we send out with parcels on the table next to the mouse near the computer? There you go. These ones that I printed that I couldn't see. Yeah, those ones. So, Here's an idea, not to be repeated. I thought it'd be really nice to put out a little flyer of what's on this autumn. I have failed on the first two things on the list. One of them is my fault, the other one's not. So the first one was um, 1st of March, project demos up onto YouTube. So we did the demo the other night for the bag. And then we should be able to download it from YouTube. 
sorry, from Facebook and upload it onto YouTube. No, they've got a little bit funny again and they've stopped us from downloading Facebook content and we do believe it coincides with Facebook deciding not to renew their licensing agreement with Australian media. Anyway, it's all about they don't want us to take the content we put on Facebook and put it somewhere else. It's happened to us before. But what that means is I can't take Thursday night show and put it up. So I'm going to film a new separate little bit on the basket and upload that as the calendar special. And that we have to remember. And then Rob and I have to work out what we're going to do in terms of moving forward that we can't upload our shows onto YouTube at the moment. Everything can be done, but it all costs the dosh. So we've got to work out how we're going to do it. Number two on the list, the third, it'd be today, um, the Go Go Girl relaunch with new kits. So, when I saw you on Thursday night, no one put their hand up and goes, Lise, how are you going to pull that off in 48 hours and have that bag ready to go with the sample, with the new ones made up as well. A few things did get in the way on top of that. A little bit of a glitch with Shopify admin, a few things. So, uh, it's not done. But also, there's a bigger decision, there's a bigger picture decision to be made with that because... When I choose handles to go on the bags that are going to go on the cover of the pattern, I have to make sure I have enough of those bag handles as well to be able to do the kit. So there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a play. Um, and Angela will get then I want to be able to kit them to sell them wholesale as well to other stores with the handles. It's just it didn't quite happen. So I do apologise. Uh, I did put some colour combinations together that I thought would work, and they didn't. And I wasn't going to throw that at you this morning and just say here here's a kit it'll work because I really want to make it myself and make sure that it is really good to go <clears throat> the other thing as well I thought well okay I know what I'll do this morning we'll use the bag base that we use for the go-go bag and I'll make some little baskets in the last 45 minutes I don't know if I have gone backwards in my bag construction skill level or I had just forgotten there are some really important tips with going around curved bases that we didn't cover the other day the other night so I want to do those this morning with you um, and I'm going to go back to my pattern because every time we re-release a pattern we all we always end up tweaking it a little bit there was nothing wrong with the last one but we learn don't we, as we go. So I want to go back and add a couple of little extra tips in. I'm going to go through those with you this morning. And then at the same time, um, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the new fabrics and some new ideas for it. Then I will come back to you with a new Go Go Girl kit and you'll go, yep, I know how to do that because we talked about it. <gasps> Carla's here from Canada. Hello. Good morning, Carol Newton. Hello, Susan. Susan and Suzanne, better phone than home in the store or <laughs> damage at Emerald. Oh, oh, so true, so true. It's eight degrees in bright, just in case you needed to know. Good morning, Pelé. Robert, are you speaking to the girls in Spanish again or not? No. Not yet. Joy, good morning. No. Okay, so. Um, I behaved. Okay, so first and foremost, let's have a look at what we've got on the wall behind us this morning. Play school wise. Um, <coughs> this is what we had a look at the other night and Susie and I on Friday spent a fair bit of time, <laughs> some of the time went, going through and starting to cut the orders that we had from the other night and the main thing that we did go through and start cutting was the pre-cuts. So we've got, where did I put them? This. So we've got this beautiful pack of all of the new uh, Shimmer Ginkgo range. Now today, oh Rob, I haven't done the sign. Can you print one here for me, please? It's just the word oval, 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 as in football oval, as in an oval mirror, as in... Football oval, except for our UK people whose football ovals are... Australian rules football oval. <laughs> UK ignored that line. Okay, so today's word is oval. I don't know, what else is oval? I don't even have an oval mirror in the house. I don't have an oval diamond. I've got nothing on my fingers this morning. I don't know. An oval cameo brooch. O V A L. 
everything's under oval and Rob's on that right now so he'll put it up on the stand behind a lot easier than Giko so this is this is the pack that we um, had the other night so you can see that let me hold it towards the camera not the screen Lise. okay so this has got remember the giggle with this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven <laughs> I thought there were 10 and there were 11. So you're getting 11 for the price of 10. There you go. So that packs up and that is 11 fat eights in there. So we had to juggle our stock because this has been really popular. And so we have to continually take stock off what's available by the bulk to put into the pre-cuts. So that took a bit of time. So we've still, we've still got those available, but at the same time, our stock of the bolts is running down quite quick. So we've got those. Um, there is, there isn't, there is not any of the new shadow plays left available on the bulk. So we made the call on how many fat quarter packs to cut. And in the end, pretty much all of it has gone into fat quarter. So I think there's about five of these left. And they are, yes, it is dodgy, Rob, even though you put the new thing in. Um, look at them are they they're just beautiful soft eucalypt greens all right I'll confess there was all right there was about 40 centimeters and 30 centimeters left on the bolt of these and I've nabbed it I mean I couldn't I couldn't do anything with them anyway for you in terms of the fat quarter packs I've nabbed them because I think these will be seriously audition, auditioned for next year's calendar projects project and projects so we've got those uh, I was asked a couple of times best what's that doing there? zip color to go with all of these and the answer is um, the royal blue looks absolutely gorgeous so that goes with that so it's it's nice having a, it is really nice having a a part A and B because we can come back and have another chat and that's that beautiful one that was not going to go in the fat eight packs but it has it's just it's just stunning um, I've only popped up one of those beautiful uh, strippy ombre fabrics you'll see them on the website because this is light navy there's only about a meter of the navy one left some people obviously knew not looking at anyone, like people obviously knew what they were going to do with it. So there has been serious yardage bought of the other one. But this is the light navy. Just... Yummy yum. Um, so that one's up there. And the other thing I found, I'll just set up there for posterity really, is these two beautiful guys. These came in, were these in just before Christmas? I think so. I can't remember now. I think they were. And they sort of got, they got lost in the chaos. They, that happens sometimes. If you get two fabrics in that you know are absolutely gorgeous and you're going to find a lot of things to do with them, but then they arrive late and then it's like, what? what? And they get lost. They get lost in the fray. They didn't get lost in the move. <laughs> that was last year. Um, they got lost in the fray but these two are waves by Hoffman and they go beautifully with this ginkgo collection and so because they've been here a little while and not feeling loved I popped them on special this morning you're going to pop that one there that's the blue and then look at this sea green it's very yummy while you're while you're looking at those we're just going to pop this up somewhere anywhere Pop up this oval sign. Uh, it's taken me way too long. I'll come back and do it in a tick. Um, so, can, do you want to hold it here so you can see? Look, see? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I'm going to pop these back up. Um, oh, while I've got them down, let me just do this for you. Let me turn it. So it is full width ombre right across I don't know what's not to love I think it's beautiful I just folded that back so you can see the other side of it and I'll pop these back up 
So I'm I'm not going to panic buy you because I just think that's rude. But I will let you know if you've got friends that uh, don't Facebook, they will 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 tally up <coughs> the rest of the orders. Double check our stock because we low, and I will pop them in a newsletter this week. So um, and you sort of that kind of ties up with our offer of combine. Is that straight? Straight enough. That combines up with our offer of combining postage. So I've set it for midday tomorrow. You know Susie doesn't come in until Tuesday morning, but then I have to, then it's crunch time for me to decide what goes in the newsletter. So if you've got time today to have a look and just decide what you'd like. Did that sound like a panic buy? Hopefully not. It's supposed to be like a soft sell. What they call a soft sell. Liz Brett's here. Leslie Reynolds here. Deb Wilkie's here. Hello, Deb. How are things in SA? Are they good? Shirley. Oh, Amanda. Hello. Um, Catherine, Lynette. The girls are in love with the last show fabrics. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good, aren't they? Hi, Lisa and everyone. Good morning. Here. Who's that? Glenda. Hi. Oh, my goodness. You're all busy. Good morning, Jill. Carol's here on my phone. I can't find you on computer. Oh. Search Chandler's Cottage under Facebook. It should show up. We're there. I can see you're here, Tara Gold. I can. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. Wendy Gontia. How on earth did that happen? I was talking about you yesterday. Unbelievable. I hope you're okay, mate. We should talk. We should talk. Oh, I can't believe that. That's just freaky. Oh, sorry if I scared you. <laughs> um, oh, how exciting. Literally, yesterday I was talking about you. That's just weird. Oh, okay, let's move on. Now, the other thing that we got in this week are Northcote stone hinges. Now, I, I'm going to say at, at Quilt Market in America, I'm going to stop my stomach in now because I'm going to go sideways. In America, I used to walk past the Stonehenge stand because it just didn't Stonehenge of the old I didn't really do it for me that's probably about seven eight years ago it really didn't um, the colors were always really kind of dark and earthy all the time and I it just didn't float my boat <laughs> then things have changed so now they do float my boat. So I actually, for the first time, Chandler's Cottage, as shown on the website, under oval today, or Stonehenge or whatever you want to put in, um, have got these new ones. So I didn't, I didn't buy them all. And in fact, I only bought one of the earthy tones. I didn't, I didn't buy all of them yet. It's a big investment, folks, to go out and buy huge bolts of a whole collection of fabric. So I've bought the ones that I think I would like, <laughs> I would like to use first. Um, and the ones, I sort of did a bit of a combo of some that are a little bit more tonal and then some, some that are like wowza, that they really have lots of colours going on in them. Fiona Grogan, good morning. I nearly forgot it's 8am. Fiona, I owe you a pack of needles and I have since December, everyone, I've owned Fiona a pack of needles since December and every time I get an order from the distributor, they're out of stock. So, Fee, I'll have to talk. We'll have to do something else. No, it's the same ones that Sylvia's waiting on on back order as well, I may add. Um, look at that. I don't know. What is it? It's a little bit pro hard, a little bit splotchy. It's a little bit... But what I, what I see with this, there's so much going on that this is Fussy Cut City. So, I see irises, cosmos... Zinnias. I see lots and lots of different flowers. So you've got this full lime green. Um, there's just so much. And the repeat is 60 centimetres. So in fact, when I was cutting the fat quarter packs, which I've done uh, yesterday, when I was laying them all out, I actually looked at one and went, oh, that's really strange. There's one extra one. It was two fat quarters from the same fabric, just folded and from a different section so they're really lovely um, so there's look there's a few actually what I'll do they've got a they've got a gorgeous feel now because I was torn 
with what you might use them for. I've done two things. There's eight different colours. I have, morning Jin Jin, um, I have cut two different options as a pre-cut for you. So I have done a Stash Essential pack. So that's this one here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you've got 80 centimetres in this pack. And these are all of the colours. So I'll show them to you with these ones. So you've got that eight. So that's really the only earthy one, but I couldn't resist it. All right, so I'll pop that aside. And then I've done it as a fat eighth pack. So here you've got a total of a metre. So I'll just lay them. See, they're a great set together. And then you can pop that with it. And or you can do these ones up here with that one. This is very Easter, isn't it? All those pretty bright pastels. There you go, like that. Now this is my earthy one, but it, it had to happen. I had to have that one. Because I just think that's got so many uses, particularly with under the Australian sun, eucalypt, bush, forest, all of that sort of stuff. So that is the eight. So you've got more in this pack than this one, and that's why there's a difference in price, because this works out to 80 centimetres and this is a metre. So they're just, they're just another thing that I wanted to add into our um, family of coordinates and and it's just, I don't know, they're just really yummy and very different. So I'll pop that back up there. This one, I love that. Right, so I'll pop these back up. Um, I haven't even, I haven't even, I only packed them yesterday afternoon. I haven't even had, morning. I haven't even had a chance to play with them yet with the ombres, but I'm sure they're all going to go. Really? It's one of those mornings. Right. Um, so they're really good. Now, the other thing that we've got in is... I don't know how many there are. There must be at least a dozen new printed Northcote boutiques. Um, I've put them all up on the website. I haven't done the pre-cut packs yet because I really want to do, do packs that go really well together as a mix. So these new stash essentials I was talking about, they're going to have six colours in. So we've got the BFFs from Northcote, the Banyan BFFs and the Keytans. So, uh, uh, Jen, I'm not, I'm not quite sure this is going to work for us. Oh, yeah. just done so this is the pattern on a, I'll just hold it there. That's a BFF pattern. So it's like, it's more of a, what? It's more of a, no, you don't. It's more of a swirl. I'm not giving you my fabric. Um, it's more of a swirl. What's the better? This one might show it off a bit better. Don't get me wrong, there are, I want to say bazillion, that's not very technical, hundreds of thousands, um, and feel free to make a comment if you agree or disagree. To us it feels like there's hundreds of thousands, more than tens, tens of thousands, thousands of boutiques on the market. There are, and they range in, in, in quality, uh, texture, colours, everything. There's just so much out there. And the, the, main, the main boutique studios, like uh, Lund Studios at Robert Kaufman, you've got Hoffman of California, are well known for their boutiques as well. There is, you know, like the 1895s that we stock, the standard ones, and then they've got a whole range of print ones. There, there are thousands and thousands of them. So if you decide to stock a boutique, it gets really hard to work out which ones you want to stock. So for me, <clears throat> I'm still very much attached to some of the 1895 Hoffmans that we have used for a long, long, long time. Colors like Julia and Herb and Lizard, I'll always have those in stock because I use them. But then for me now, I've decided to go Northcote, and part of that was price point, because Hoffmans now are up around $30 a kilo. $30 a kilo. <laughs> He's been buying fruit in bulk 
Um, Thirty dollars a meter, uh, and then these come in at twenty-four. So there's there's a difference. So in price as well, and to me that makes makes it as well. But the thing about the Northcotts are the quality is super good and super high, and I know that. When the prints come in, they'll always be the standard coordinates that we have all the time that will go with them. And I also know that in terms of the quality, I don't get any wax on them, I don't get any faults in them, and uh, if I reorder a bolt, as best their ability will come in at the same colour, because they're hand dyed, so it's really hard to get the consistency. And yes, okay, so I may be playing with Northcote just a little bit at the moment myself with some designs. So that's why I have these, but they are just beautiful. I'll show you this one too. So the Keytan has got the little rice design. Oh, like this. And that's very yummy. And then this swirls the other one with the BFF. So they're all there for you to have a look at under oval. And as I said, I'll come back and get some pre-cut packs together for you as well. So that you can, if you want to add to your stash of boutiques you can of course they're absolutely fantastic for doing raw edge applique pacing making clothes as maria does <laughs> and a few you know just there are multiple abuses that's why of course as i've said before so many art quilts are made with boutiques because they don't fray and they're pretty much the same color on both sides and so they're really really good for raw edge applique so that's for another day i actually want to come back and revisit them with the pre-cuts and a chat about them when we come back and have our little catch up and see where everyone's at with their wildflower wreaths and their Waratah panels and that I'm thinking is Thursday week. So we'll come back and have a look at them then. In the meantime, if you've got any questions on them, just let me know. Now what I said that we'd do today is talk about oval bases as well. And um, <laughs> we're going to do the go-go bag. Actually, I'm... I'm probably really relieved now that we didn't because I really want to make sure I get it right. And I could have had a sample here to go this morning and I, I feel like I wouldn't have been doing you justice of getting up at 8am to join me if we'd done that. So let's take a step back and have a look at some oval bases and then we can also have a look um, at how to construct a nice tight oval base or rounded curved base so first of all too I left this out here this is the ginkgo leaf that we did um, the other night um, I'm going to ask Amber to digitize this up and and just just change it a little bit just make it a little bit more flowy curvy for me and then um, I'm going to pop it up as a as a little as a little free download for you so that you've got it I need to do this one I've also got to do a double ginkgo for our 100 block quilt as well so we'll get her to do those this week and then I will let you know when it's up as a free download for you so you can grab it. I've still got here my overall from making our bag the other night so we'll keep that we'll keep that with us as a reference. Then um, I went as I always do to the crockery cupboard first so there's two ways that you can get yourself ready for a base. Good morning, Catherine. Oh, she slept in. Oh, you're so funny, you all apologize. Good morning, Linda. Uh, look, that's fine. You've, it'll be there for eternity. Just won't be on YouTube. Oh, so we'll fix that, we'll fix it. So this is our base as well that we used to make this one. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I've also got here Wait for it, wait for it. It's in here. I can feel it. This base. So this is the base that the Go Go Girl bag was originally planned around. It's Matilda's own base and we have these. But it, um, yes, I did put it under the thing. But, but you can use this or you can use any shape that you want to to create your own. But this is the one that we use for the Go Go. So... Oh, that's the other thing. I want to be able to put these in the kit and I have to order them, have them made, have more made. So, now, if you look at this one that we used the other night, it is a full oval shape, whereas this one's got straight sides and then curved ends. 
for the purpose of, of the construction technique, they're both the same for us. It, it doesn't matter which shape it is. So I grabbed some things out of the cupboard to have a look at with you. Whoops, oh, my stool just went from under me then. That's a bit risky. Okay. In my cupboard, proudly found and purchased Cheltenham Rotary Market. I don't think there's only one platter. <laughs> there's, there's three and there's jugs and there's stuff. Anyway, so this one here, if you've got one or you've got one of your grandmothers or something similar, it can even be a modern one. This is a great oval. This is an Alfred Meakin. Or oh, don't even want to use my Sharpie on this one in case he's a bit porous. So this is going to give me, without doubt, a huge oval base if you compare it to this one. But again, it might make an, well, it would make an absolutely beautiful shopping basket. It would be gorgeous. It would be bigger than this and it would be out here. So it would be really lovely. It would. So keep that in mind. Then, so that one's really good. Then I've got this one. This huge one, but also if you've got a scanner or you can get to a photocopier, then you can always um, reduce them in size. So if you like the shape, a new page. If you really like the shape, but it's a bit big or it's a bit small, you've got a stationery store or your post office. It's got a photocopier that it can reduce or enlarge. I have to remember we're really lucky. Who's in lock? Someone's in lock. Watching from lock today, Melissa. Very nice. Um, I have to remember, we, we take for granted sometimes that we have a photocopier here. Um, but if you don't, I'm sure you can find one. So this one, okay, so this, this is a great shape. This is my winter coat bowl. <laughs> so Rob's mum, Rob's lovely mum, three kids, took me shopping. For a winter coat and she said I would like to buy you a winter coat and we walked into a kitchenware shop and I found this bowl and I said please Doreen instead can I have the bowl and she said yes because she agreed it was a beautiful bowl so this bowl is actually now very old and I still love it and use it to bits you'll see it in a lot of the photography of stuff that I do it's my winter coat bowl so this shape see it's a little more pointy at the end but it's still an oval. Then, who's got these? <gasps> we didn't have these for a long time and we have reintroduced them into the family fold for banana sundaes. Mum always she did banana sundaes on a Sunday and then she used to do them for the boys as well until very recently. So if you've got one of these or you see one in the old shop, grab it because look at it. It's very similar. Now I've got the handle down this end. So I'm going to do that. Oh, I've just remembered another one I've got in my cupboard. You, When you go shopping, you start looking at um, things very differently. Now he's not quite symmetrical. So what I would actually do is cut him out, fold it in half and just trim so both the ends were exactly the same shape. But go looking to see what you've got in the cupboard. Then if we want to make one a little bit more like this. Here we go. Robert, you look ridiculous with those earplugs in. Why do I want a banana? I don't need a banana right now. That's, that's my brunch. Go away. I don't want a banana. Now the other thing that you can do is create one a little bit more like this, but with rounded ends. So I've, I've chosen a saucer because it's going to make it, it's going to make it quite large, but then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So he just bought me out a banana for the banana splits. I'm going to draw a whole circle on. Again, I'm using my graph paper because it just makes my life a bit easier sometimes. And I'll grab my ruler. 
and measured the circumference of the widest point of my circle. Please be something easy. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. That's about six inches there. So at this point, I can redraw my circle down here. Or if I don't didn't have graph paper, I could also cut this out. Let's do that. I'll cut it out. And cut it in half. Kathrine, where have you been? Christine, good morning. Lorraine says she's a bit late, and that's perfectly fine. We will accept that. There's no penalty for being late on a Sunday morning. None whatsoever. I'll just cut this out. Ironically, Bridge, are you still here? Ironically, yesterday, uh, we finished mulching, just a little bit late, we finished mulching the oval rose bed, which is officially called Otty's Rose Garden. So, um, it was all ovals yesterday. And uh, we're sort of getting ready, aren't we, for a late, dry start to autumn, where we are. I know it's been absolutely horrendous in WA. Okay, cut this down through the middle. We've had it, everyone's had something different. I don't know what's better about finishing the oval bed off. If it's finishing the oval bed off or clearing nearly all of the 16 cubic metres of mulch off the driveway. I'm not quite sure. There's, a, there's definitely a sense of relief and Robert achievement <laughs> doing that. All right, so can you see what I'm doing? I've, I've, cut my semi, I've cut them in half into my semicircles and now I can decide how narrow or how wide I want my base to be. So if we decided that we wanted it about that wide, and remember this is the joy, you're gonna be able to work out your own panels, um, how wide they have to be. So I think about there's really nice. I'm gonna leave those there and then if you wanted to as well, you don't have to leave um, them completely rounded. So if you wanted to, you can come through and take off, I'm going to do it this one first, take off half an inch. So if I put my ruler down here, parallel to the lines on my graph paper, so again the graph paper is good, I can straighten it off. So there's just, you can have so much fun playing. We'll get to the panel width in the moment, I promise, but so now oh, I'm going to fold it so it looks better. So now you can have this funky base that will go round on a curve, go straight and round the other side. Now, the when we did the one that we did the other day, the Easter one, and also the one I'm going to do this morning, we're working with one piece that goes all the way around with one side seam here. When we do the go-go, which I promise will happen next weekend, we will, and a couple of other bags actually, will be on display next weekend, we're going to come round and bring our panels round to here, round to here, up to here and there's going to be side seams that go up so it's different again isn't it Jin? so it's different again but essentially it's the same way to work out how wide those panels will have to be but there's lots of little tricks like this that you can use to create your own curved bases and if you want your curved base to just be a circle it can be. It can just be a circle and the same applies. It's all about having straight and outer curves. That's all that you need to make sure that you've got to do it. So that's what we'll do. We'll come back and do the go-go with that. Now what I started doing um, this morning that I thought, 
had them done in 20 minutes. It actually took me an hour and I didn't quite finish. So I'll show you what, again, I'll show you what I'm up to. Where are you going, Jim? And actually, you just reminded me, Jenny, we might do this now. Show you where I'm up to, why I had a problem with it, and then how we're going to fix it and make sure it's all in. We <laughs> says, I'm still here. Yes, Joy, it would. I don't have one of those anymore. Dressmaker's curve. Right, I didn't do this bit. This is the obvious bit we need to do. When you've got your curve, particularly if you're using something like a plate, then this is what I do. I just get a piece of cord. Remember I was talking the other day about just using something to measure around. What was that for? Oh, that was for the purse frames too, wasn't it? So if I go right around this, bring it in here. It's always better to have a little more than a little less, but just make sure that's nice and snug. And from the edge of my knot here to there is my panel length. It's huge! It is. I was holding it on my board. That is 36. That is that is 36 inches, 90 centimeters to go around that. So that would be big, but it will it will still fit within the width uh, of fabric. So if you just wanted to do one like this, in that shape, with a nice short side to use to pop fruit or eggs or anything on for Easter on the table it's still only going to take the height of your panel. So if you want it to be six inches high, you're gonna cut a strip six and a half. So in, I suppose it's not that bad, is it? And then you'll um, need two pieces, then you'll need to cut the same for the lining and a piece for your base like we did the other day. Where are you going? No, 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 thank you. So that's that one. Now with the go-go base, Sorry, base number two, this one here, which is much smaller, I popped this around this one, and you can hold it against a diagram as well, it's just pretty, it's just a little bit easier to pop it around a template or a bag. When I did this one, it came out at 20 and a half. So I actually, got started before you got here and cut some panels out and started making up a set. So last uh, last time I touched on the possibility maybe of trying out the Melba panel to use with it. So that's what I've been doing this morning. Not as fast as I would like. And Robert will tell you with a few expletives <laughs> along the way. So Oh no, I dropped something. Hang on, I gotta get it. I gotta go and get it. It's probably trying to remind me too because I didn't mention it. Aww. This is my set, but um, we've got six of the Singing the Blue sets left. So that's it there. So I've popped them up under today's search word oval as well. I just think these strippy in this would be really nice. So I've cut, we had more meterage of some than others. So I could get six more cuts out. So that's what we've got and I've popped them up on special. Um, there's a little bit of yardage of three of them available as well not a lot and the others have disappeared off the website and the reason that they have is because uh, they they're being auditioned for little projects in um, from margaret and my let's go dutch um i don't know what you want to call it thing that we're doing together this year so we're doing a collaborative little dutch inspired projects and recipes and they're being auditioned for that so that's why they're not there. It's a bit of a race on at the moment and she's winning to get, st <laughs> to get stuff done. 
All right, so if we know that we need 20 and a half, I went and grabbed 60 centimetre repeat of my um, ivory and my grey Melba. And this is what's, this is the other side of the bolt. So I decided to use the light for the lining and the grey for the, um, for the outside. And this will apply to any fabric that you decide to fussy cut down if you decide to use border prints like the Easter basket or anything like that. So I wanted to do large, medium and small with that shape base. And I know that I can get it out of the 60 centimetre repeat because that's 24 inches. So the, what I did is this. And I've got it folded in half here. Um, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to make sure it's right on the line. And you'll see why when we get to the next bit. So with this print, and this applies to, this applies to any print that you decide to use. So this one, um, I allowed, what did I allow? Half an inch before it hits the selvage. So at the bottom here, I'm just going to take off the selvage at the bottom. And then I'm going to cut it into divisions, but I don't want to end up with my little wattle um, trim showing. So I've cut that to there. Then I'll move up to the next bit and trim that little bit off. Sacrilege, but he can tie up a tomato bush. Then I'll come up to this one. So I really, <clears throat> I must admit, I didn't worry too much about measuring the height because it's just a one-off for me. It doesn't matter. And the height doesn't impact on the dimensions and how we construct the bag because it's just the the height of this, uh, the surround, just trim a little bit off there. Okay, so they are going to be my three, large, medium and small. And then to get exactly the same out of the, the lining pieces, all I did was line these up over the top. So I had the same part of the pattern there and then chop. Pop that on there and then chop and the same here. So that's how I actually worked out to make sure I had the same widths for the lining pieces as well. Then because we know that they need to be um, 20 and a half, half of 20 and a half my friends on an early Sunday morning and any other time is 10 and a quarter. So I folded it right, right on that mirror image line. You can see there I've got half the stirt rows on either side. Laid it on my board and trimmed it down. Ten and a quarter. So now that is my piece that will go all the way around my base that's going to be cut with this template. So that's done. So I did that with all three of those and I did it with all three of the lining pieces as well. And then I got stuck into my bases. So I decided for my base to use the little floral. I thought I'll, I'll stick with the theme of this. This is where things started to go pear shaped because I was rushing. I must admit, probably hadn't had my Vegemite toast at that stage. True, it did come though, and it was lovely. Just putting that in there because I didn't make it. And then I... Right. So the other day when we were talking about this one, I said, it's really good to have the template drawn on and then add the quarter inch seam. Absolutely true. Nothing wrong with that. That's correct. But when you get down to tighter curves, you have to be a little bit more careful with keeping your seam allowance constant because I didn't and this is this is probably the best one let me show you this one so if you can see 
See down there, it's a little bit wonky around the edge. Um, and it's, it's a very generous quarter inch seam. So I actually need to trim this down. So this is my first, okay, I need to go and have a look at the Go Go Girl pattern because I told everyone on Thursday night that it was okay to draw your seam allowance on later because it determines the shape. Yes, on a nice big oval, yes. But on this tight little sucker, it needs to be a scant, continuous, sorry, scant, even, quarter inch. So I'm going to have to eat my words, go back and look at that pattern, quite possibly in the pattern, and you may snigger if you get this pattern, I'm going to put it in with and without the seam allowance because I'm telling this to you, but if someone somewhere buys it and they don't know me and they haven't seen this, they may not keep it nice and tight and even. So I've trimmed this down now. And the reason for that is, is that to get around this tight base, when you go around these tight corners, if if you haven't, if it's, there's too much, you'll feel like it's not going to fit. The other thing, if you're really wary, a couple of extra little tips, if you're really wary about doing the curves, I would also suggest, oh no, where did that go? Oh, it's down there. Robbie will come back because he's listening and pick it up for me. I know he will, it, it'll happen. The other thing, if you're a little bit wary, you might also like to mark your seam allowance onto the, uh, the bottom edge of your lining and your base. Handsome, can you just pick that up off the... You're not on camera, it's fine. Thanks. Not that, not that it's a problem if you're on camera, it's just you'll blur everything. So you might want to draw it onto the base here as well, so that when you actually head around that edge, you, you have both of them marked to line them up. Like if you were doing a, what's a good example? A drunkard's path, a curve, one of those, an orange peel. Okay, I'll draw it on that one too. So, here's, here's, Here's where I'm at. So what's this one? That's the medium. Here's the little one. Oh, it is going to be uh, very, very cute. So cute. Um, the great thing about having this template too is that you can use it to sit inside at this point and hit it with your little iron and go around the edges to get them out nice and flat or one of those things what are those things called <sighs> I've forgotten you know the thing that you put inside a sleeve when you're making clothes so you can get the cuff nice and flat good morning Sharon um, hi Denise you know what I mean don't you I don't know what it's called anyway Emma would be really cross with me, I don't remember. But anything you can put in there to get those edges nice and flat. So that's the outer. That's the inner. So this will get put together now exactly the same as a bag. And I have left the opening in the lining. So that's going to sit in here. And then we're going to sew right around the top. Pins, lots and lots of pins. Very important. Um, so I'm doing, I'm now doing what I shouldn't do. You know how that goes. I'm just pinning. I should really, really be matching up. I'll do it with the next one. The halfway mark at least. But I just want to pop this in to show you what happens next. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I pulled it off. Okay, so that now will get sewn right around the top. We might do that one in a minute, like that. Then it's like Goldilocks morning, isn't it? Then we've got the middle one. And so that's what the lining looks like. 
I, these, I really wanted a set of these to have in here. Um, perhaps to sit bundle, fat quarter bundles or pre-cuts of Melbourne. I thought they'd be really nice to have here. Just as a little extra thing to have on the counter. One of the, one of the, there's not a counter, one of the tables. So that's what the medium's going to look like. So they're fun, aren't they? They're like, they're like an open version of our trio of purses, I guess. So that will be the lining in here. And do you remember the other day we talked about um, popping a little loop into a seam as well? So keep that in mind. Oh, <laughs> did you see what I did? Let's try that. Let's just try and match up the seams. I had it crossways. There we go. So that will sit in there like that. There's been a whole trio story with this, um, with this border print. And the other one that I can think of that I don't know that I ever completed, Natasha did, Natasha makes in the UK did, was the large, medium and small lampshades, wasn't it? The girls in the, in the UK will probably remember better than me, but I'm sure she did all three. Oh, now I have room and I have a bazillion PowerPoints in here. We could have the lamps. But this this re, this shape reminds me of the lamp the oval lampshades that we did. All right, so back to this one where I'm up to the constructing. This is where Lisa, where you talk about the tailors all. Tailors all, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, is it a tailors all? The 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 long cushion hard thing? No, it's not. Is it that you pop up into it? I can't remember. I'll find out and I'll let you know. All right, so I'm up to construction. So I've got, here's my big one. This is the big one with my seam. And this is the lining one with the seam. You can see I've already pressed that open so it's easier to sew up later. No laughing about how often I sew things up. And I'm going to draw on my base for my lining. Oh, I just had a thought. Oh no, I had a thought. I don't know where it came from, but I had a thought. Okay, we'll go to that in a minute. Um, so, when I cut this out, I need to make sure that I keep this nice and trim. Do you know, I found it easier to construct the outer with the stabilizer, with stabilized um, pieces from the pellon. I've used 640 in mine. Okay. There we are. So that's that. This is good. I need to put um, one of those mats underneath so that it doesn't roll away. Okay. So, fold in half, give it a really good press, and either, or well, put your glasses on so you can see what you're doing. Ham! Thank you, Linda. It's a ham. It's a ham. Ta. I've got one, you know. I do own one, and I don't think I've seen it since we moved, which means it's in one of the boxes in the bottom of... The TV room, and if you're in the UK, the snood. Big, I've got a, um, that'll be where it is. I'll have to find it. Pronto. I need it. Okay. Because we uh, live in a big house and we wanted to make sure that we conserve energy and stuff, we've compartmentalised. So we don't have a TV in our big living room. We have a TV room now, which is great, actually. 
and then when we're heating or cooling we're just in that one little room as opposed to our last three houses where we had huge living areas and we'd be heating the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to just draw that line in because I only did one side before so I want that quarter inch line all the way around. So I have marked the four quarters on there and then I'm going to mark them on here as well and I'm just uh, just to make my life a little easier I'm just doing it with a pencil I was doing it with a pin but there is a risk of them when you're sort of handling it that it will fall they'll fall out which I found happened so I'm going to mark them like that then I'll go in and match up now I was pinning with this on top before with the base on top and I need to pin from this side because I want all of the side panel of the basket to be on the top when I am sewing because as you go around the tight corners there's a bit of a a bit of a gather and a pleat up you'll see as we go so this goes on here that goes there and now I've got the line on the the panel and on the base so when you look at this you'll go that's not gonna fit so you have to have blind faith in your mats that it will and see what I'm doing you've got to ease it out ease it splay it out and get those lines to match up so this is probably a great little um, exercise to do before you make before we get to the go-go bag and in fact in the go-go pattern it does suggest that you make the lining first so you get used to the process of the construction now I've got a little bit here that doesn't quite fit so for now I'm actually going to move it a little just a little Um, because I can always come back and adjust it again and just you know maneuver it maneuver maneuver it around when we do the go-go bag we actually don't have all of this process of matching up and getting the base to fit the loop um, is not there because we have two side seams so you'll put on one around uh, around one side up two halfway across the tight corner and then the same on the other side so in a way the go-go is actually easier because if you've got a little bit of excess on that side you can just trim it off so this side's fitted fine now so I'll pop one in there so you can see lots of pins and just ease it in as you go and then when you um, get to sewing it, sew it with this panel on the top, all right? Because you can see this. If I was to go in there with the sewing machine now, in fact, I might, um, you end up with a bit of a bunch up around the corners of the panel. So... There's another two marks where they're supposed to match up. Pop that there. Oh, well, I don't know why I'm sounding surprised. It does. Pop that in there. And you can see I'm pushing that out with my fingers like that. So if you have a tailor's hand as well, you can always lay this over while you're pinning like you would the cap on a sleeve so if you're familiar with that process you'll be fine I I do recall um, some people have actually oh, I'm out again it must have been me it won't be you it'll be me um, some people do tack first particularly with the outer go-go 
So if you wanted to tack, you can. Just so you know it's all together. Now I've got a little bit of a overshoot here, but you know what I can see? See that seam there? That is a very, very scant quarter inch. So I don't know which stage of panic I was at at the time, but I would say that's why this is out a little bit and I might need to go back. You see what I'm doing? I'm just going back around and re-easing in. And now I'm in, okay. I could go back and actually narrow off that side seam, make it a bit bigger. All right, so there you go. So that's the process of getting around there and you'll do exactly the same with the outside of the bag and that's my base. So they're covered in the palette and it's actually easier to do. So that's those two. So I'm going to finish that off and that'll be my big Waratah one. I'll just turn him through for you. And then I'll just I'll pop over to the machine and just go around the top of that little one that I've got pinned around the top. So that'll be the that'll be that one. So I think um, they'll be cute. Now I've popped both the ivory um, and the the grey one under today's search wood, and I have taken some off them for you for today. And the specials will stay up, um, not for long, because then we move on to the newsletter. So the specials will only stay up where I've reduced prices on things until lunchtime tomorrow, midday tomorrow as well. Because then um, the newsletter will be finished and go out and they, they are just for you. They're just for Facebook friends. So... I need to take off that because I'm going to run around um, the top ring on this bag. So we'll just pop over to the machine and just run through this. print I really really want to make one of these with is my Summer Palace border print. <laughs> so if you search 0018 um, in the search window it will bring up the Summer Palace borders. They're a different they're a different setup again. They have two large and two small borders that are different. So you could have different sets I suppose. Actually, with that one, you could use the two large ones for the outer and the inner, and the two small ones for the outer and the inner, so you'd end up with a large and a small set combo, which would also be cool. Maybe I need to do that. Yeah, I need to do that. Um, and we've got them in red and ivory and blue. Blue, uh, the blue, moss, green, grey, um, which coincidentally goes with the... Uh, fan table runner from last month from the calendar. So as a nice combo on the table, they would actually, they would actually be really nice. Just something else to do. Alright, so I've been right around the top. Now as I said, you'll have to excuse me because my seams are very wonky because I wasn't very careful with that seam allowance on my um, base. So, okay. what you say, Suze? You can make a large pin cushion and only partly fill it with walnut shells. Good for ironing odd shapes. That is brilliant. Thank you. What a great tip. Debbie, late to the show. Um, I wasn't going to, Deb, but I probably, I probably could because then you would only have to, then I would do two 
what would they be? Jumbo fat quarters, I suppose. Let me think on that. It may, it may be something. This is, this is cute. As I said, I can stick this face in. Give it a bit of a bit of shape. I think what might be um, a good idea with this is to use whatever template you decide to use. Go back and make um, three more, or whatever you're doing, one, two, or three more, out of just template plastic. I'll show you from the top. Oh, sorry, wrong one. This one. Um, template plastic, and and leave it in there, and it's going to give you just a a little bit more body. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. Let's bring the iron over. And we'll just give it a little press. So small, medium, and large. It'd be very, it was very tempting for me to put the Melba fans in for the, um, for the lining. But then I thought it'd be really nice if we put this combo together. And maybe you're right, Deb, as a kit, because then you can decide which, uh, which colour you want on the outside. So, yeah. The Oval Ruler. The Oval Ruler is actually a bag base and I can't remember, Deb, but if you hop on the website and have a look under our search word for today, which is the word, oh, I got it right, went the right way, Oval, everything is, um, everything's under there. All right, so that is my first little basket. Up to you whether you want to run a top stitch around the edge of the top or not. Um, I've done this just with Palin this morning. You could also do it with the firmer bag batting. That's what that one's going to look like if you wanted to. But just keep in mind, when you go to turn it through, you're going to need a decent hole to get the firmness and the thickness of that bag batting through. So if you feel it needs a little bit more grunt, then I would probably put a stabilizer, like a, an adhesive interfacing on the lining that's still going to be thin enough to pull through. And the other option is you can mix and match up your batting. So you can put the firmer bag base, uh, batting, sorry, adhesive bag for rubber foam batting on the bases and then just use the thinner ones for the sides. So that's going to be my set of little baskets to have here with, I don't know, what are you, pretty threads, little stuff. Hmm, be cute. So there you go. So I, I hope that gives you something to think about today. Go forward, look in the kitchen cupboards, find something you can work with, find yourself a piece of string or cord that you can use to measure around your platter or whatever. When you add your quarter inch seam on, keep it nice and even and not thick. Keep it a nice scant quarter inch. Remember, as an extra little precaution, you can also draw your quarter inch seam onto um, the edge of your bag panels, whether it be the inside or the outside. And remember, you're going to leave that little opening in the side seam. So when you sew your loops together, like we did on Thursday night, leave that opening in the lining on the side seam. Don't leave it in the curved base. It's just too hard to work with. All right. So just some little extra tips for you. And I think we did... I think we did everything. I think we did. We did. And you'll find all of the, oh no, we didn't. Um, you'll find all of those new fabrics on the website under Oval as well. You'll also find, I've got about five of our Christmas applique essential packs left. I need to find a home for these. And my when my brain sort of went sideways before, I was thinking about how we could do these um, strippy and perhaps foundation piece them down so that's just another thing I'm going to keep in my head for a rainy day to share with you but in the meantime these would be great to use cut them down into strips piece your side panel piece together so you've got a really cool set to have ready for Christmas as well so they're up there also and I think that's it so I'll just check you don't need anything and I think you're all good all good 
All right. Um, all have an absolutely fantastic day, won't you? If it's Saturday night where you are, have a good night's sleep and have a great Sunday. If it's Sunday morning and you're up and at them, I hope you have a fantastic day. Great week ahead and I will see you on Thursday evening. Now, Thursday evening is planned, all scheduled out. Okay, I've got to finish making the sample, but um, it's halfway there. And we are doing little things, little things on Thursday night. So I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, Quilters Life members, we are back on Madam Butterfly tomorrow. So I hope you're going well with your butterflies and quilting your butterfly block. Um, and then there's a plethora of things to make in the kitchen this week as well for a Quilters Life. All right. So have a great week, won't you? Take care. And um, I shall see you very soon. I'm going to head out into that garden. All right. See you later. Bye.